Good evening. The time is 24 minutes after 7 o'clock. Welcome to a brand new Wednesday evening program entitled Punta Fuego. Yep. Uh, once again, good evening to you wherever you are and thanks for choosing love. And uh, once again, introducing to you a brand new Wednesday evening program, Punta Fuego, where we discuss all things uh, fisheries right here on uh, Love FM. And uh, it's about a 45-minute program for you. And uh, we want all fishers uh, to tune in today. Uh, we're going to have a discussion on a topic. Oh, to inform you, uh, we have our first segment is always going to be a little drama. We have 26 weeks of this program, and uh, it debuts tonight. All right, 26 weeks and uh, debuts tonight, and we want you to listen because every week the drama continues. All right, there's a follow-up from tonight's episode for the next 26 weeks, and we have a call-in segment as well where you could call in. We have an expert in studio uh, in the name of uh, Margo, or Mauro Gongora, Mr. Mauro Gongora from the Fisheries Department, and he's going to be in studios with, with us after the drama. We'll have a discussion with him, and we'll dis discuss... Uh, Punta Fuego. It's a brand new weekly uh, program for you. And it's dedicated to all fishers. Uh, so, fishers around the country, good evening to you. And once again, welcome to uh, Punta Fuego. Here's the first episode of Punta Fuego. Stupid fool! Jesus! You can't do one thing correct? Take it easy, Sito. Nothing to worry about, boss. The bad weather last night will take care of it. You better hope and pray, Chinchi. Cause if the police. Look, boss, you don't know to Rico handle the police, but if any. Idiot! Tuono! Listen! The decomposed body of a man was discovered at the southern end of Parakee late yesterday evening. The body, which appears to have been washed ashore, was discovered by a tour boat operator. Due to the advanced state of decomposition, an autopsy was conducted on the spot. Police are investigating and are seeking... <laughs> you see, boss? Everything taken care of. Just like you wanted. That man done, done. Can't even recognize her no more. The sea finished the you job. Sick son of a... Enough, Anna. Shut the hell up. No, see, oh. This is too much now. I can't deal with this. I can't, oh God. Pull your drunken self together, woman. You hear me? What you need to do to understand. And forget everything you see and hear, yeah. Sito. Understand me, Anna. Play like they were bad dreaming, you know. Sito, she can't even breathe enough, boss. Useless damn woman. <laughs> Anna, what is again, Sito? Things to get out of hand. Only oh, no, too damn interfering. The boss and another have one lead quarrel. Stop fast. Yes, take some advice. Stay out of things when you can't stand, you know. And keep on your mouth shut. All of you know. What we got to look? Same thing where we had two hours back when you asked me. This is son hat must get to you to the richie rich. <laughs> richie rich? If that may only so look, hmm. I had some plans this year week, boy. Shana, what trip on me? I know, man, I know. You know, say I got some serious bills myself to take care of? I can't decide the Punta Fuego for try me luck because things me dread bad, bad with me. I promise to buy Shana one S4 phone. The why you make woman stress yourself? You a Lambo girl like she the hard way, you know? She will take your S4 phone for call S5 man. While you left with S zero money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, look, but on serious note though, uh -huh. they are last four months, they rough. But I glad to see you the fish with me. I glad you take me upon your skiff too. That's on a serious hard time I left behind me on a Richie. And I don't really escape it yet. 
I just glad for earn at least something. You're the one good fisherman, Luke. I could see you got good experience, more than me. Wish I me know one little bit more about you. Hey, hey, left that so. Sometimes the man have to left the past behind to survive. Punta Fuego is our first start for me. No worry, Rich. I will stick wrong. Shana said people still they talk about you. The whole tongue to damn interfering if you ask me. But I understand. Out of the outsider, yeah. I prefer it like that. I really need to figure something out. And it's just not a meat. Hmm. Listen, Rich. I need a certain amount of money this week, too. And you know you got Shana to deal with? Mm -hmm. I have a lead suggestion. Talk to me. Lobster season will open right here, so. Less than two weeks. But I got one lady right now ready to buy as much lobster as we could carry in. Why, look. One land, man. One land. Hear me out. Maybe just this one time, Richie. We need the money bad. Think about it before you say no. Why, just to think about it to get me nervous. But I want to sleep on it, look. Because, Lord, Shana. Shana, the pressure. <laughs> Isabel Ramos, the Queen Kong herself. Well, well, two handsome fishermen here to see. How are you doing, Isabel? You miss me? Of course, Tom, my love, of course. No mind, Isabel. She missed the money we want. Pay the lady, man. This is not serve we. I'm a throat dry. <laughs> oh, hush up, Ralph. You should get home to your wife before she come and lash your backside Yeah, so again. <laughs> This bloody blasted Isabel. You know everybody business now, they say a tongue show. Well, honey, it's long time at the yard of Punta Fuego now. Isabel Ramos has seen plenty and not forget nothing. You know, as a young girl, I used to be a waitress right here. And I hear you had the heart of every fisherman in town. You that still the sweet conk, sweetness. <laughs> But seriously, Isabel, thank you for helping me out with Dali loan. I got your money right there. Oh, uh, there. Oh, thank you, handsome. I like one joke, but oh no, no, Isabel, cap on his back. I know, say the life of fisherman not always easy. First long on the house, then come Isabel, good afternoon. Sir McCoy, uh, good to see you, sir. Sir Stanley McCoy. Long time. Hello, Tom. Long time indeed. I don't get out much these days. Join with Sir McCoy. Take a little drink with No, 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 no. No, thank you. Haven't touched liquor in years. Many years. Oh, all right then. Uh, 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 um, you wanted to see me, Sir McCoy? Yes, Isabel. A private word with you? Oh, sure, sure. No problem. Isabel, when they write you, Oh, yeah, so, so. Uh, and I will fix on the boys up right now. We'll only take a minute, Isabel. A message for Anna if you see her. Um, she, she's supposed to come by, Sir McCoy. She I know. Here. I know, Isabel. I can't keep track of her, though. I give up on that. But tell her. Tell her tomorrow asking for her. A special occasion at school, and the child want her there. Ask her come to the house. You know, Sir McCoy, maybe you should have passed here again. But when she's around, you could have talked to her. I got to get going. I don't waste my breath nor time chasing after Anna Isabel. If she have any interest left in the child, she wants to stop by. Good evening. Okay, sir. Goodbye. Lord have mercy. People life wrong ya only complicated Daddy Shana look at the damn time what you do ya? What? You send for me, Dad? You text and say for come see ya? That not good while no. Shana, why you have to be so disobedient? I was busy. Relax. Busy? Shana, you don't know what busy is. You're lucky you'll find me at this hour. I stopped by the shop first. But wait, wait. 
How comes you there so late? Don't question me, miss. I have a little arrangement with Cito Diego. He comes in a little later than usual. Oh, secret business with fisherman, dad? A little extra business, that's all. I doubt he'll come in today after all. It's past late now. Strange. Anyway, my business is none of your concern. What you should be concerned about is that waste of time, Richard Valencia. I may know it. I may know that was the reason you call me here. You can't choose for me. I choose to be with Richie. He is good to me. Good to you? I don't see how. He brought in hardly anything today. He had that comeback drifter he picked up. Good to you? <laughs> I've been good to you, Shana. From the day your mother's eyes closed, I look after you. Everything I earned was for you. The store, that's supposed to be for you. You not even take interest. Ungrateful. Dad, Dad, calm down. You know either your league, yeah? No, not anymore. A fisherman, Shana. A common, dirty fisherman. Richie isn't dirty. He got education. He's handsome too. And he not try to boss me wrong like you. You want to control me. I want the best for you. I know the left Richie, Dad. I see. You want to embarrass me. Me, Ernesto Castillo. People look up to me like this tongue, Shana. I won't tolerate you with that dirty fisherman any longer. I 24. I don't know picnic. Remember, I don't live under your roof anymore. No, but you still want to enjoy the privilege of my money. I never wanted a hard life for you, Shana. But I see how you want to defy me. Well, the monthly allowance don't know. What? Dad, you can't be serious. You detect when my allowance? That's right. But what will I do? I need money, Daddy. Your man can provide for you. Remember, you don't live under my roof. But, but you, you say how I will always have the money. You said it was mine. I don't believe this. <laughs> believe it? Stop the crocodile tears, Sue. They won't work this time, Shana. Either you leave that filthy fisherman or find yourself cut off. Not a penny more. You hear me? Cut off! There you have it, folks. Episode one of Punta Fuego, right here on uh, Love FM. And you'll be hearing a continuation of what happened today for the next uh, 26 weeks here on Punta Fuego. Good evening to you once again, and uh, thanks for choosing now. Uh, this is, of course, Armin Arana. And uh, we have a professional, we have an expert from the uh, fisheries department in the name of Maro Gongara. And uh, we'll discuss uh, what happened in the drama as well. He's be, he will be sharing his expertise uh, right here in Punta Fuego. And, uh, of course, we want you at home to be a part uh, of the discussion. All right, we'll be asking some questions and feel free to call us and to give your input on the drama. All right, reminding you that this is just uh, episode one. And uh, this will uh, continue until we reach a climax of episode uh, 26. The number to call is 203-2098 or 203-0528. In studio with us uh, from the Fisheries uh, Department, Fisheries Officer Mauro Gongara. Good evening to you. Good evening, uh, Armin, and uh, good evening to all our radio listeners uh, across the country of Belize. And we'll be hearing more from you in just a few, uh, Mr. Gongara. I I'm sure you heard uh, the drama just a while ago. And uh, of uh, just to just to recap a, a bit for us, uh, Anna in, interp in, interrupted a heated discussion 
between Sito and Chinchi to listen to a report of a decomposed body. Uh, all right, that decomposed body was washing up on Pelican Key. Uh, Sito grabs her by the throat and wants her to uh, forget the drunken thoughts that troubling her mind. And uh, we heard about Richie and Luke. All right, they are, they are fishermen. Uh, they had another unsuccessful day uh, in terms of fishing. So Luke suggests to Richie that uh, he has a, a request from someone who would be interested in purchasing some lobster, despite the season being closed. And uh, then Richie, uh, he had refused, but Luke has reminded him uh, of their dire financial situation and as well Shanna's temper and expensive demands. So uh, you know how ladies are, right, Mr. Gungara? Of course. Uh, then Shanna uh, went to meet her father, Ernesto, at the co-op. And uh, Ernesto, of course, bring up Richie's dismal catch that he had and gives Shanna an ultimatum. Leave Richie or find herself cut off and on her own financially. So uh, that's just a little uh, backdrop for you of episode one just a while ago. Now, uh, 203-2098 is the number you could call us. 203-2098, 203-0528. And uh, tell us, uh, all right, Richie is faced with a tough choice. He has a tough choice. He has a chance to make extra money and meet his girlfriend's demands. But it means doing illegal fishing and a risk getting caught. All right, so Richie is definitely in a dilemma. I want you to call us. We, we want to hear from you at home here on Punta Fuego. 203-2098-203-0528. Do you think Richie should go along with Luke's plan and why? That's the question I want to hear from our, our listening audience. And uh, what will happen to Richie and Luke if they get caught? And what does Belize uh, and why, should I say, why does Belize have a closed season for lobster? I have the expert here. He'll be sharing his opinion. But I want to hear from you at home. 203 2098 203 to 2098 203 I have a caller ready. So uh, let's see. Uh, good evening. Welcome to Punta Fuego. Hello. All right, we lost that call. 203 Let me repeat those questions for listening audience as well. Uh, you heard the drama. Do you think Richie should go along with Luke's plan and why? Uh, what will happen to Richie and Luke if they get caught? And why does Belize have a closed season for lobster? Here we go. We have a caller again. Punto Fuego, good evening. Yeah, I think Richie is our fisherman, so he shouldn't have go along with that because yeah, mess up the livelihood as well. And all if fisheries catch her, you know, you're not easy. Uh huh. So, so your advice would be get rid of she. <laughs> get rid of Shana. Yeah, get rid of her too much. So, what will happen if Richie and Luke get caught doing illegal fishing? So I get charged three times. I might lose a fishing license. Mm hmm. Go to jail. Okay. And uh, um, uh, the close season for lobster. Let's talk lobster. Why do you think they have a close season? Why well, they have a close season? Because nobody knows that they control uh, their thing for the lobster. So we have to look out for that. That's why you have to close the season to make the small one they're big. You have to be sustainable. All right. Um, uh, you're the first caller for Punta Fuego. You're making history. Uh, what's your name? Carlos X. Carlos Eck. Tyrone. Ty Tyrone Eck? Yeah. Where are you calling from, Tyrone? Belize. From Belize City? Yeah. All, all right. What, what part of Belize City are you calling from? Port. From Baca Port? Yeah. Well, Tyrone, here's what I'm going to do for you for being the first caller to Punta Fuego. Oh, we, we just lost him. We just, if you could call us back, um, uh, Tyrone. I want to give you a Punta Fuego T-shirt because we have some giveaways on this show as well. All right. Uh, I want to give you a Punta Fuego T-shirt. And as well, uh, later on, we'll be giving away a, a trip to Caves Branch, all right? Ian Anderson's Cave Branch. That, that's a, I've been there, and that's a wonderful place to be. Uh, so, uh, Tyron, give us a call back so that we could tell you how you could uh, get your T-shirt. All right, uh, a Punta Fuego T-shirt. It's, it it's a beautiful T-shirt. We could take more calls, 203-2098, 203-0528. Do you think Richie should go along with Luke's plan, and why? What will happen to Richie and Luke if they get caught? Why does Belize have a close season for lobster? We have another call. Punta Fuego, good evening. Good evening. I'm just calling to say that if he really loves the girl, mm -hmm. he should go and take the risk. He should take the risk? Yeah. Because of love? Yeah. Remember, and he sounds like she really loves him. 
But what if they get caught? Um, they should run away. Run away? I don't know. Do something. Be romantic. <laughs> All right. And give me a reason why uh, there's a close season for lobster. Well, they want the young ones to go so that, you know, they have a lot in the, in the sea or something. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm losing my cause before I could get uh, your name. All right. Uh, I, I, need, I, I just want to get your name so that we know what part of the country you're calling from. 203-2098-203-0528. Now, uh, Shana thinks Richie is handsome and has a head on his shoulder, but that Richie can't provide for her. Her father will support her. What do you think she should do? Uh, I have got another caller here. Punta Fuego, good evening. Yeah, good evening, sir. Your name, let me get your name quick. Uh, Richie will go to jail and uh, take away his license. Uh huh. Let me get your name quick and before you. It's cool season to real get more lobsters. All right. That's why they, um, my name is Greg Stump from Bermuda Landing, the East District. Greg Stump, Bermuda Landing. Uh, yeah. Okay. I want to thank you for uh, calling us here at Punta Fuego. You enjoyed the drama, right? Yeah, same. All right. Then they'll be listening for, for more weeks because this continues. This drama gets uh, more better and better as we go along the weeks, all right? Okay. Thank you for calling. Punta Fuego, good evening. Hello, good evening. Could you lower your radar for me, your TV? All right, good night, good night. Yeah. You heard the drama? Hello? You heard, you heard the drama earlier? Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Richie, should he go along with Luke's plan? Oh, uh, man, he should. Why? Um, Do you think Richie should go along with Luke's plan if you heard the drama and why? Um, sorry, I didn't hear the drama. I didn't hear the full drama. Man, you missed, you missed the drama. Uh, but uh, we just had uh, our first episode of Punta Fuego, and uh, we're discussing what happened in the drama, right? So if you listen, we, we have a repeat on Sunday. You could listen so that we could be a part of it next week, all right? All right, all right. Thank you very much. Uh, another caller here. Love, good evening. Punta Fuego. Hello. Yes, tell me. Uh, you to ask why they have a closed season for the lobster? Why is there a closed season for lobster? Allow the lobster to reproduce and to go. Okay. Uh, did you hear our drama earlier before we had this call-in segment? No, I never really had a segment, but I had a question. All right. We want to thank you for your input. What's your name? Gregory Cayetano. Gregory Cayetano. Where are you calling from, Gregory? Um, 40 Euphrates. Number 40 Euphrates here in Belize City. Yes, thank you for calling Punta Fuego, Gregory. Enjoy the rest of your evening. All right. Then uh, we're definitely getting a, a lot of callers. Uh, I, I, as I mentioned earlier... Uh, should Shana, should Shana, uh, Shana thinks Richie is, is is a handsome dude, and he has a head on his shoulder, but that Richie can't provide for her. Her father still supports her. What do you think she should do? Should she, should she take her licking and tough it out with Richie? Or do you think she should have known the life that she has going into with that uh, fisherman? Let's see who we've, we've got here in Punta Fuego. Punta Fuego, good evening. Yes, man. That, that, that guy is going to be a fool if he takes her advice because... If he end up to jail, then uh, she's going in another month. Uh huh. So uh, you think that Richard should should not go along with Luke's plan? Nope. Okay. Um. Uh, so if they get caught, if Richie and Luke get caught, what what what, what would happen? Yeah, he go to jail because uh, there's a big consequence. Mm hmm. Take for those uh, fishing stuff, no? All right. Now, no. Uh, uh -huh. yeah, Shana thinks Richie is a handsome dude, right? And uh. Her father still supports her. Now, what, what do you think she should do? She should take her, her licking and tough it out with Richie, or do you think she should have known the life that she is going into w with a fisherman? Well, uh, if she loves the dude, then I, I think she should have figured out with Richie. <laughs> All right. Uh, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Belize. Your name? Ricky. Ricky? Hernandez. Ricky Hernandez from Belize City? Yeah. What part of Belize City are you calling from? Port. Baca Port. Yeah. All right, Richard. We want to thank you for uh, tuning in. You're going to tune in next week again, right? Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Punta Fuego airs uh, every Wednesday from 7.15 up until uh, 8.30. And uh, we, we're getting a, a whole lot of views on this drama. Um, uh, of course, uh, Mr. Gongora 
And uh, you, you heard some of the, the comments. And uh, let me get to your views here as the expert in our studio. What would you do in uh, Rich's situation? Of course, the idea of uh, carrying out illegal fishing is, is not a good one mm -hmm. um, for various reasons. Um, the, the reason why there's a closed season is, is simply because um, it's, it is during this time of the year and I'm um, speaking about, for example, our, our lobster, um, the closed season, which starts from the uh, 15th of this month, which is Saturday, mm -hmm. starting midnight Saturday, until... Uh, 15th of February. February, All that's right. right, until the, the, the 14th of June. Mm -hmm. That's the, the closed uh, season for, for lobster. Okay. And it's during this time, this, uh, this period, I should say, that the... Um, the lobsters are, are in a peak spanning period, okay. and which means that they are, um, they have, they are producing uh, eggs w from which um, larvae will, okay. will, 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 will come up, and these will settle eventually uh, on the seafloor and uh, become lobsters um, in the future. Mm -hmm. And so fishermen um, should take that into consideration because if they are going to kill this um, lobsters that um, mm -hmm. that are buried, which 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 simply means that have um, eggs attached to their to their bodies, um, then uh, obviously fishers would be um, uh, causing um, great damage to the to the right. industry and particularly to the lobster fishery. Now, in our in our drama Punta Fuego, uh, Richie and Luke uh, they had an unsuccessful day uh, in terms of fishing. And uh, they, they, they have, they have an, a, a request, uh, someone requesting purchasing some lobsters despite uh, the season being closed. Now, Richie, of course, had refused. But Luke, you know, he reminded Richie that, man, you have a girl. You have a girl that uh, needs your support. And she's a, she's a, she has expensive taste. She has demands. <laughs> As an expert uh, fishes officer, uh, you're in Richie's uh, situation. You have a girlfriend and you're a fisherman. And uh, you had a, the season is just going bad for you, having bad now the season is closed. What would you do? What would you do, Mr. G? Well, Richie um, has other options, <laughs> other alternatives. Mm -hmm, okay. Uh, the, out at sea, you don't find only lobsters. Mm -hmm. And um, what we at the fisheries department have been encouraging uh, our fishers um, to do is to diversify right. in terms of the uh, other species, the commercially important species mm -hmm. that... Um, are currently not being utilized or underutilized. Okay. And so he should be looking at other uh, alternatives, you know, mm -hmm. for him to to earn uh, enough money to sustain his family. Right. His girlfriend, his expensive girlfriend. girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> now, wh why is there a closed season for lobsters? Well, the, the as I, I said earlier, it's to protect the spanning stock. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and really what, what happens during this time is that the, the lobsters are reproducing. Um, uh, the majority of lobsters um, during this closed fishing uh, season uh, would would have um, eggs attached to, to their bodies. Right. And so um, it is for that reason that um, that there's the closed season. Mm -hmm. Of course, it allows the the younger lobsters to 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 grow, and um, also for these lobsters um, to enter into the fishery, which uh, later on become available to to fishermen for, for harvesting. Right. Uh, this is uh, Punta Fuego here on uh, Love FM, the first ever episode. And, uh, of course, we do have a Facebook page, Punta Fuego's Facebook page. You can check it out. And, uh, of course, we will repeat this program again on Sunday at 1.15 p.m. Uh, check out Punta Fuego's page and uh, so much information right there for you. Fisheries Officer Mr. Mauro Gongora, um, uh, talk to us. You, you, you explain to us why the closed season for lobster but uh, the impact of people fishing out of season for lobster, what's the impact? Well, at the end of the day, um, those fishers that um, engage in, in illegal fishing mm -hmm. um, are really affecting their own livelihoods. Okay. Um, by by uh, catching lobsters and harvesting um, other species during the closed um, season, mm -hmm. um, they're actually putting at risk the industry. And uh, that is something that uh, we have always at the fisheries department 
advocated that fishers respect the fisheries regulations, respect the, the closed seasons, and um, the, the, the minimum sizes, the mm -hmm. minimum weights, and so on. It is important for, for our fishers to understand that uh, these regulations, this uh, management regime that we put in place, it's for their own good. It's, for, it's, it's to ensure uh, sustainability of the fisheries. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Now, uh, why are fishers not allowed to have fillet or diced lobster tails? Um, we're talking as well soft shell, buried lobster, lobsters with tar spot. Uh, why is that? Well, the issue of um, of lobster tail fillet mm -hmm. uh, is really an important one that you've raised, okay. and uh, the reason why fishers are are not allowed to keep it um, is simply because they could take the, the, the lobster meat or um, from the tail from either a undersized right. um, tail or mm -hmm. from a legal size right. uh, tail. And so it would be very difficult once they have cut it into smaller pieces uh, for the enforcement officer to detect or to determine whether the, 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 the fillet, the lobster tail fillet, mm -hmm. um, it's coming from an undersized one or from a legal size animal. Um, the lobsters with eggs and those uh, lobsters that have tar spots are actually the in, in reproduction. And so to protect those uh, spawning stocks, um, then the regulation uh, prohibits possession of these um, animals. To your knowledge, uh, when lobster is uh, taken out of season, uh, who is fishing for it and uh, who, who buys it? It's the same fishermen. Um, not all fishermen mm -hmm. um, respect the, the fisheries regulations. Um, there are a uh, few of them, right. a very small number of fishermen, I, I would say, mm -hmm. that um, really do not care for the, for the fishery resources, for the sustainability of these resources. And uh, it is illegal for, for, for these fishermen to catch um, lobsters during the closed season, and they know it. Okay. Uh, it's not that... Um, they are unaware of the of the, the regulations. I would say that perhaps 95% um, of the fishers um, are fully aware of all the, the regulations uh, for these fisheries, and particularly for lobster and conch. Okay. And as well, um, uh, now tell us, tell us, uh, Mr. Gongora, uh, or you could walk us through what happens to someone if they if they get caught caught uh, catching uh, illegal lobsters. Uh, take us through that process. Well, the fisheries enforcement um, personnel, which are part of the uh, conservation and compliance unit uh, within the fisheries department, mm -hmm. are, the, are the officers that enforce the, the fisheries regulations. And so basically, um, if, if the incident occurs out at sea, the fisheries officer um, would identify himself as a fisheries officer mm -hmm. and um, state his intention that he will... Um, search that particular vessel for any legal uh, fishery product. Right. And uh, once he has done that, then uh, he conducts his, illegal, his, his search mm -hmm. of the, um, of the ice box or uh, any other place within that particular vessel um, to, uh, to find out if there's any legal product there. If, um, if he finds uh, an illegal product, mm -hmm. um, then he needs to to show this um, product to the to the to the fisher or to the person whoever that is, and inform that person that it is uh, an offense that uh, he has committed. Okay. And so, um, right after that, the 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 fisheries officer um, needs to show um, that that particular product is illegal, mm -hmm. and uh, and the way how that is shown, uh, if it's a undersized lobster, for example lobster tail, I should say, then the, the minimum weight um, should be four ounces. And so if that lobster tail is less than four ounces, uh, the officer, uh, arresting officer, needs to show the fisher that that lobster is less than four ounces. Right. And so he will need to uh, take account of each individual um, lobster tail mm -hmm. um, that is um, undersized. Um, and uh, after that, then he would... Uh, the fisheries officer would um, fill out what we call as an exhibit level label, mm -hmm. um, which basically um, 
says um, what is the product that is being, um, uh, the legal product that has been identified, and uh, the person who has committed the offense, the fisheries violation, um, needs to sign this, um, uh, uh, this label. And, um, and a copy, if, if the fishers request a copy of the information, right. then a copy is, is granted to them. Mm -hmm. And um, after that, then the, 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 the fishery officer would, um, would uh, let the particular person uh, know that um, there's an, uh, uh, a summons will be served on him. And um, once the summons uh, is ready, it is served on, on the person, and the person is required to um, appear in court. So there is uh, a possibility of a fine or even imprisonment. Right. Um, at, at the court, then it's... Um, it's at the, the court level. At the court level, it's the prosecutor. From our side, it would be our fisheries inspector okay. who would then present the case mm -hmm. and um, to the magistrate. And it's the magistrate then who would decide um, after reviewing the, um, the evidence that is presented to, to him or her, um, decide in terms of um, what would be defined. But um, there's, a, there's, an, there's a fine for possession of the legal product um, to start with. And um, right uh, after that, then the magistrate can also decide in terms of um, putting a fine on that fisher or, or that person for every individual um, lobster tail. And that fine could range from anything between 20 and $30. So if a fisher, for example, is caught with 100 um, mm -hmm. tails, mm -hmm. uh, you'd, you'd have to multiply 100 by 20 to get the minimum um, uh, fine that that person could get, or uh, by 30 so that you get the maximum. Wonderful. Now, uh, I on average, how, how many people are, are would you say, in, in, in your estimation, are caught fishing uh, in terms of out of the season? How, how many people on average? I don't have the exact figures. Mm -hmm. um, on hand, but um, they're, 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 it, it varies every year. Okay. Um, some years you'd have higher numbers, and in others you'd have lower numbers. Mm -hmm. But I would say um, perhaps anything from 20, 20, 50 persons could, could be charged um, uh, for illegal fishing during the close season. Yeah. Wonderful. Now, um, uh, you're the expert. Are there additional measures that would affect a person uh, who is caught repeatedly breaking the law? Like additional uh, measures, uh, uh, if, if there's a repeat offender repeating, there's a a new um, fisheries act that is is currently being reviewed by by government. Okay, and um, in one of the provisions in within this act is that it will allow the fisheries department to implement a three strike rule, um, and what it means is that. Um, Fisher will have a first opportunity when he's warned, mm -hmm. um, and a second opportunity when he's charged, and a third opportunity if he if he continues violating the fisheries regulations, right. then his license would be um, um, taken away from him, and he would not be able to to fish anymore. Wonderful. Now, uh, Mr. Gongora, anything you believe we've missed in terms of information that will be helpful not only to fishers but uh, to the entire country as a whole? Uh, something we, we might have missed. I, I just wanted to say that the lobster fishery is num is our number one fishery resource in right. Belize, uh, mm -hmm. generating uh, in excess of eleven million dollars annually. Okay. And um, as it even if, if this might sound as a as a small amount of money, uh, socially it is uh, it is very important. The lobster fishery is extremely important to our coastal communities, uh, particularly, for example, in the north communities like Sartaneja, yeah. Chinoosh, and Copper Bank, Central Belize, Belize City, um, Dangriga, Hopkins, St. Bike, Monkey River, uh, Placencia, uh, Punta Gorda. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, uh, it's, it's important. And, and, um, and we have, um, what is it, close to 2,800 fishers. Okay. And we estimate that 15,000 Belizeans uh, are direct um, beneficiaries from the lobster fishery. And so it's an important fishery mm -hmm. that we need to, to take care of. We need to ensure that uh, everything that we do um, is towards sustainability, the conservation, and um, the sound use of, this, uh, of these resources. We want to make sure that the lobster is there for not only for this generation, but for generations to come. 
And so we want to, to ask them and, and, and to ensure that, that the fishing community complies with our, our regulations. And, and by doing so, they are going to be protecting their own livelihoods right. at the end of the day. That's right. Well, Mr. Mauro Gongora, you, you're making history. You're the first guest uh, fisheries officer here on Punta Fuego. We want to thank you for stopping by. And I'm sure uh, we have 26 episodes, and you'll probably be back uh, sometime down the road here in Punta Fuego. Thank you. I would, happy, I would be happy to do that. Wonderful. And uh, you know what we'll be doing at this time? Uh, this is Punta Fuego, and uh, this is the debut. And uh, we want to give away some stuff. We want to... Get, you know, I want to start off things with a bang. I uh, want to remind you, though, that you could always uh, check out uh, Punta Fuego on our Facebook page. All right. Check out Punta Fuego on the Facebook. Uh, you could do that. And uh, as well, uh, this episode will be uploaded uh, on uh, the Facebook page, Punta Fuego Belize Facebook page. And we'll repeat this program uh, uh, for you Sunday at 1.15 p.m. Every Sunday at 1.15, repeat of uh, Punta Fuego. Here's what we're going to do. We're about to give you a nice uh, little trip to Ian Anderson's Caves Branch right here in this beautiful country, Belize. All right. And as well, we're going to add a Punta Fuego t-shirt along with that. So here is how you get to win. All you've got to do is to tell me, and this is very easy. Our fishers officer mentioned this earlier. All you've got to do is call us at 203-2098 or 203-0528 and tell us, what are the dates for the opening and close for lobster season for Belize? What are the dates for the opening and close for lobster season here in Belize? You get to win a trip to Ian Anderson's Caves branch and you get a Punta Fuego t-shirt, 203-2098. 203 You tell us your name. Tell us where you're calling from. Punta Fuego, good evening. One second. Go ahead. February 15 to June 15. February 15 to? June 15. To June 15. February 15 to June 15. That's what you said? No, you're wrong. Try again. Uh, Punta Fuego, good evening. Thanks, good evening. Yes, where are you calling from? Let me hear where you're calling from. I'm Punta Gorda. You're calling from Punta Gorda. Now, you have an answer for me? Is it 15th of February to June the 14th? 15th February to June 14th. I have Mr. Gongora, who's a fisheries officer here. He is a professional. Is she correct? That's correct. You are correct. And uh, can I get your name? Brigida Mushamp. Brigida Mushamp. You're calling from Punta Gorda. All right. So, Brigida, you just won yourself uh, an Ian Anderson Caves Branch uh, trip and as well a Punta Fuego t shirt. Uh, can you leave, leave a number with me? 6024910. 0 Thank you very much. Uh, now, tell me, you enjoyed the drama? Huh? You heard the drama before? Yes. You enjoyed it? Yes, I really enjoyed it. All right, and you're going to tune in next week, right? Yes, sure. All right, Brigida. All the best to you, and congratulations. There you have it. The uh, lobster season, closed season for lobster, 15th February, which is coming up on Saturday. Sunday. Saturday midnight. Sa- Saturday midnight, yeah, Saturday midnight. And uh, it goes to 14th June. So that's uh, coming up. And uh, once again, we want to thank you, um, uh, Mr. Gongora, for stopping by. All right. And uh, we want to remind you again that next week, Wednesday at 7.15, another episode of Punta Fuego. We're going to find out uh, what's happening with Shana and Richie and as well, Cito and uh, all our uh, uh the folks on Punta Fuego, what's the latest, all right? Now, uh, we saw that uh, with uh, Cito hitting Anna, uh, we're hearing Luke is trying to send Richie down a similar path when it comes to respecting the fishing laws. All right, if you see someone doing something that is wrong, it's even worse to do nothing about it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been the first episode of Punta Fuego. Reminding you that we'll be back next Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. And there's a repeat of today's show Sunday at 1.15 p.m. 
And uh, this episode will be uploaded on uh, Punta Fuego's Facebook page, Punta Fuego Belize. We want to thank you. And uh, this has been Punta Fuego.